Hey everyone, in this video I'd like to discuss some common issues you'll run into while doing all sorts of hard surface modeling. So let's say you're modeling this iPhone charger here. Now, you know, you can round out the edges pretty easily by just adding on a subsurf modifier and throwing in some of these proximity loops. And then, you know, I can just add in some horizontal loop cuts there at the top and bottom, which will kind of tighten up the top. But as you can see in this image, the top here is pretty flat, pretty sharp. So there are a few ways we could get around this. The first is my original favorite way, but no longer once I teach you the new techniques. You would just add in a proximity loop, another one there, and boom, look at that. Nicely flattened out and you could you know, get it closer to the top and flatten it out even more. And that gets the job done pretty well. But the downfall for that is it adds in extra geometry and that extra edge could just kind of become annoying to work with. The next way is by using a mean crease. So if I hold Alt and Shift and select all of these edges here on the top, I could press Shift E and, you know, I could just add in a mean crease there. It gets the job done fairly well, like right here it doesn't look too bad, but if I want it to be sharper, it starts adding in this distortion, this weird shading issues, and overall it just doesn't look very good. I've never really been a fan of mean creasing unless I absolutely had to use it, so I tend to avoid mean creasing. But the best way and the way you should really start incorporating into your modeling is the bevel modifier using the mean bevel weight tool. So let me demonstrate. If I go to add modifier, and choose bevel. It's going to add in a bevel. I'm going to just move this to the top of the layer stack so that way it applies the bevel first. So as you can see it's applying this bevel modifier and then adding the subsurf. Right now it's beveling everything and I don't want that. So I'm going to change the limit method from none to weight. And what weight's going to allow us to do is choose where we want our object to be beveled and how much we want it to be beveled. So once we change the limit method to weight, we can go into edit mode and choose the areas we want to be beveled. In this case, I want it to be this top loop of edges here. And once I have that selected, here under the edges data in the transform menu, you can just press the N key to get there, we can increase this mean bevel weight, and boom, look at that. It flattens everything out, no sort of shading issues, no extra geometry, and it's very simple. All you got to do is just mess with that mean bevel weight until you get a size that you want. In this case, I think 0.25 is good. And as you can see, this top area is nice and flattened. No extra geometry, no shading issues, just a simple application of the bevel modifier. And, and you know, you can really use this for any sort of situation. It saves you so much extra geometry, a ton of time, and a ton of headaches. I really wish I discovered this modeling technique years ago, but I've just now started getting used to it. So let's say I want to continue modeling this charging brick here. You know, I want to add in this little crevice here. So very simple. I'll just select these top faces, inset them, inset them again a little bit. Just got to back a tad bit. Boom. I'll extrude these down just a little bit. And look at that, the mean bevel weight I can, it already carried over, but I can increase this. And it just kind of changes how flat everything is. You know, if it's at zero, it's a bit more rounded. If I increase this, I can kind of choose where I want that to be. In this case, I'm actually just going to leave it at zero because that seems to be the best looking scenario for me. Now let's say I want to add in these prongs here on the top. So all I would really have to do is, you know, add in some extra loops just to get those faces. Maybe scale these out a little bit. And then I would just extrude up these faces here. And oh no, what do we have? We have these rounding issues. The godforsaken rounding issues. Now most people would just, once again, just add in proximity loops, add in mean creases, and just add in extra geometry. and unnecessary stuff. But why do that when you can just go around these faces, select them, 
boom, increase that mean bevel weight, and look at that. No extra geometry, nothing else. It looks really nice. All you got to do is just increase that mean bevel weight, and you're good to go. What do we have here? Shading issues. Why add in proximity loops when we can once again just select these edges here on the bottom and boom, increase that mean bevel weight a little bit. Look at that. Looks perfect. No shading issues, no artifacting, nothing. It looks great. And it's just it's just the simplest thing. Everyone needs to use this. I don't know why everyone just still chooses to use the old traditional way. Just add in that bevel modifier, use the limit method set to weight, and you're gonna be having a good time with hard surface modeling, not gonna have as many issues. So Hopefully this gave you some insight into some new techniques for modeling. I hope you start using this method because it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of headache, and it's just going to really allow your modeling to be a lot more efficient.